Hello and welcome to Eglurg Erlina, a project we have created for the Douala Awards 2021 from the Clare Arts Council and the Irish Traditional Music Archives. I'm Tara Breen and this is Nuala Kennedy and we have set out to trace a line between female County Clare musicians of the past and of ourselves working in the present as Irish traditional musicians. Kaimich Alanura Eg Eishjakt Agus Fiche An Yakar PC A Raunumak Ak Jairi Gling Fuyaru Krahmich PC Nua Lakela Eg Tarang Lakela Kyol Bio Tafadu Asan Gartlin Agus Sound Design Mar Jerfa Lenar Gara An Alin Tor Agus Kyol Tor Ziggy Campbell As Albin. Next, you'll hear a piece we created which was inspired by the late Kitty Hayes, who sang and played concertina. I love the sound design in this one, which seems to suit her delicate singing style. Ziggy created it from a, a track I sent him of Kitty playing a tune on her concertina. And I just felt somehow that that particular tune complemented the song. Um, before we begin, one other thing that we noticed um, in our research was the lack of places women at the time might feel comfortable playing music a consequence of the Public Dance Hall Act of 1938, that the old house parties and country dances were no longer allowed, as Kitty remarks in this piece. And instead of the country dances, they wanted to bring, get people into these hall dances. Eventually, the house dances uh, wore away. Went off. The pub started and the men folk got together there, the women not so many, I think. I know we never went to the pub when we were around our family anyway. Uh, lots of all the, the other ladies that I knew of as well, we never went to the pubs with our husbands then because it wasn't the done thing. Women didn't go into pubs then. It wasn't like considered ladylike. have faded and the summer is all and the joys and the tidings of a long day is all I had longed for to wander the green fields I once knew but they're faded and gone now like the mid-morn I went upon a hilltop and I looked all around. The place seemed enchanted, but no true love I found. 
Hi, cars, the cruel tyrant that bettered you. And I mingled my teardrops with the May morning dew. God be with my old parents, they're no dead and gone. Likewise, my two brothers, young Michael and John. It was with them I rambled, though I knew there to pursue. As we tripped o'er the streamlets in the May morning dew. God be with my old homestead, not a stick, not a stone. And all over the garden, wild flowers have grown. I miss my old neighbors and the fun friends I knew. They're all faded and gone now, like the May morning dew. They're all faded and gone, like the May morning dew. Well, there's so much to say about Kitty Hayes that we could fill the whole concert talking about her and her music. Um, there was, in fact, a lovely documentary made about Kitty by RTE. It was a Shea Lake documentary and it really illustrated her life and music so well. I enjoyed watching it. Um, Kitty was best known for playing the concertina mainly, um, but she was also a lovely singer and I really enjoyed her singing style, it, to me it sounds quite delicate and precise and just beautiful, like the lady herself. Another thing that I related to about Kitty was that she found that the music really had a therapeutic effect on her body and her mind and helped her get through some tough times. She was born in 1926 in Faha near La Hinch but is most associated with Shanaway in Milltown Malby. And she learned her music mostly from her father, whose concertina she would take and play whenever she had the chance as a young girl. And like many of the other women at that time and, and the ones that we were looking at in our research, Kitty stopped playing when she was raising her family and life went by. Um, so in the later years, her husband, the lovely flute player Josie Hayes passed away and after that her beloved son Joe um, and he had really encouraged Kitty to pick up the concertina again um, and she took to the music with just a great passion even after that huge gap of 45 years. When she anan tatnivas on gyol ak jarer jalrev niro on spas inchina ekido Gigaro she biognak a jeru a sail, agus shin on rod a tug and mishnak the guini, on scale shin a crushdal, current she glinder cree or who agus armse, grow size musical rebirth eki on shin. So Kitty made three beautiful albums of music and song in her last decade and appeared at festivals and concerts on the same stage as her own musical heroes, which was a great boon to her. Um, I met with her daughter Angela here at Glore in the cafe last week and she told me that Kitty used to call her when she was living over in London and she would tell her with great excitement that she had brought a tune and that meant like learned a tune and I loved that, like that she'd brought a tune last night or 
she was just so enthusiastic about the music again and she practiced every day. As Kitty said at the end of the RTE program, we often heard that life began at 40, but I figure it started for me at 70. Um, Mary Heron was from a small little townland called Letter Kelly or Clahon Beg. And from the census, I can gather that she was born in and around maybe 1874. So we found some beautiful recordings of Mary when we were in the ITMA uh, building on one of her visits. And from there, we discovered that in 1960, Seamus Ennis came to Milltown Malbay and recorded some tracks. So Seamus Ennis and Willie Clancy had a, a strong friendship and Seamus Ennis came down to County Clare, Milton Malway, and recorded a good few musicians. And it was recommended uh, by Willie Clancy to record some of Mary Hearn's playing. And in 1960, what I think she, Mary may have been in her 80s at the time, um, she didn't own a concertina and what, she was out of practice so they say, and, but there was a, a, a two-row German concertina was, was produced and Mary uh, recorded four lovely tunes, um, including Over the Moor to Maggie, Spike Island Lassies, Silver Spear, and uh, The Heather Breeze, and another lovely jig actually called Ships in Full Sail. Myself and Nula were really inspired by Mary Hearn's unique concertina playing, and we put together a lovely set of two tunes, the Silver Spear, which we played in jig and reel rhythm, and then followed that with the Heather Breeze. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, so um, Mrs. Galvin, she was born Ellen McCarthy in 1887 and grew up in Bally Deneen in Knockalock near Kilmehill. And she was the youngest of four siblings. So she had two older brothers and the oldest brother actually was a boot maker, um, which you'll see in this lovely photo. They all had fabulous boots. And then she had an older sister as well. Mrs. Galvin was taught by the blind piper, Gareth Barry, from Ina, and she learned concertina and fiddle at a very young age. Um, at the age of 14, she actually won an Ennis Fesh on the fiddle, and aged 17, she won the Munster Fesh on both instruments, um, fiddle and concertina. It was at these competitions where um, the radio director, um, of 2RN spotted Ellen and um, in 1937 made a few recordings of her and in the 1950s uh, RTE and Brendan Brannock also recorded some some tunes from Mrs. Galvin. So growing up she was um, surrounded by older musicians and especially pipers and I think it's there she got her distinctive style mm. and uniqueness and the use of maybe dissonance and her amazing uh, ornamentation and the use of droning as well is also evident in all her playing, especially in the slow air that we will, we will be playing later. Another little thing that um, Mrs. Galvin used in her playing was the use of her small finger. Um, which I thought was amazing. She uses an awful lot of droning with the, with the small finger, like in the t use of two A's and sometimes um, drawing back to the G sharp and back up to the A to give it a bit of color in that. So I have actually used that in my playing now. <laughs> During our time in ITMA, we, we stumbled upon th lovely recordings of Ellen and we've decided to put these three tunes together. The first one is um, a set dance called Hurry the Jug, and then we follow that with two jigs, uh, Old Hag You've Killed Me, and her version of The Rolling Wave.
I'd like to introduce my friend Ziggy Campbell, who has been collaborating with us from afar on the sound design for Eglora Garlina. He's a musician and artist who lives in the Highlands of Scotland, and he's a very inspiring person, a great creator um, of art and music. We played together live a few times in the past, and um, this is the first time that we've created something like this, some special project. And with this work, what we really wanted to do was create a sonic representation of the women involved, something that would make creative use of the archive recordings to try to evoke the presence of each lady or her sonic era within each musical piece. So some of the sounds echo in and out, they stretch and disintegrate as they interact with the live material. And I think um, that's what's most interesting to me about this. It's not uh, taking folio clips from the archives and, and putting them with us, but there is that extra design dimension. It's, to my mind, it's like taking out an old Polaroid photograph from an album and you look at it and the image is worn and faded, but it's unique and, and beautiful. We listened to a lot of recordings in ITMA during our visit there from such women such as Kitty Lenan, Nonny Lynch and the legendary Mrs. Crotty. In this listening time, we were paying attention to the tiny details uh, in the music and the song, studying and listening to the recordings and the videos the four women we've chosen to study is Nora Cleary, Mrs. Galvin, Mary Harden, and Kitty Hayes. <laughs>
Nora. Well, Nora Cleary was a well-known singer and lilter from The Hand near Milton Malby. She was very well loved in the local area, although we didn't manage to find out very much biographical information about her. Um, myself and Tara ventured out in the car in search of more information on Nora and the area. It's a crossroads where five roads join and hence the name The Hand. We spoke with local man Joe Talty who remembered enjoying listening to Nora singing and he fondly recalled her being a fun-filled lady who would just sing at the drop of a hat. And we had quite the adventure that day. We managed to find the old cottage where Nora used to live and it's now quite overgrown but it was at the same time very nice to be there and to think about Nora and her beautiful songs. Nora was the second youngest child of Daniel and Catherine Cleary, her parents who loved music and they really encouraged her as a child and so did her teachers at the Shanaway National School. Her friend, the late singer Peggy McMahon, described a lovely scene saying, Nora Cleary was a great friend. Every morning going to school, her father would be lilting and we might dance a figure of a set before going to school. So I love that image. Nora was in good company at the time she was in her prime. She was sharing songs with Straty Flanagan, Katie Droney, Martin Reedy, and the late Tom Lenehan, a great singer, who was her closest neighbour. These people encouraged her and they provided a, a context for her to perform. And she loved performing, as you can see from the videos. When you get married, don't get married too soon for you. If you don't use the poker, you'll surely use the broom, Mr. Adelum, my daddlum. Hi, Mr. Adelum, my daddlum, my day. So when we saw the video of Nora, we thought that she had such a, a, a bright personality and a real twinkle in her eye and I personally fell in love with her singing voice. I really enjoyed studying it and learning um, her phrasing and um, just admiring the strength of the tune and the presentation. Her delivery really reminded me of a more northern style of singing with which I'm more familiar and um, she puts across the story very well and clearly and the melody is just crystal clear and that came across beautifully on the field recordings that were made of her in the 70s by Jim Carroll and Pat McKenzie. Thank you for watching and listening from myself, Tara Breen and Nuala Kennedy here in Ennis at the Glore Theatre. We'd like to thank uh, Orla, Nick and Ellen for their support in making this project happen. Massive thanks to all at the IPMA, um, Liam O'Connor and Alan Woods and to Siobhan Mulcahy in the Clare Arts Centre. We'll leave you now with a song inspired by Nora Cleary called Willie O. I learned them from my father, most of them. Or he'd, he'd go train us and he'd buy the ballad and I'd learn it off the ballad. I used to go in one knee when he'd be singing a song and he wouldn't think I'd be learning the song at all. The, I'd be learning the song in the quiet way. Like. And, and I'd leave my elbow up on his knee like and I'd be listening away, you know. The next thing I could sing the song.
creeping to her bedroom door so slow. Then rise up, Mary, my lovely Mary, I'm your charming Mary. I'm thinking you were listening to me, Nora. No. I thought you have the song off already. <laughs>